Rick J presents Spotlight on the Arts. Today I visit with outstanding younger actor Hudson West and mother Donna West. I'm Rick J and this is Spotlight on the Arts. Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts, supported by many uh, art enthusiasts. Uh, coming to you from the J. Rick Production office here in central Missouri via Zoom. Thank goodness we have that nowadays. I would like to ask you to please join me in welcoming actor Hudson West and Mother Donna to Spotlight on the Arts. Hudson and Donna coming to you from their home in uh, sunny California. I would like to first turn uh, welcome Donna and uh, Hudson. Oh, thank you. Hi. Thank Thanks you very much. Us. Thanks for thank having us. For uh, taking the time and uh, giving the interview. No I problem. would like to first, I'd like to first uh, turn to uh, Miss Donna West, mother of child actor Hudson West, to give her insight into the workings as a mother of a child actor. Uh, Donna, if I may call you by that first. Please share uh, with the viewers your best introduction of actor Hudson West. So share with the viewers just how this came about uh, from a parent's perspective, if you would. Well, when he was younger, um, a lot of people would comment on how cute he was when he was real small. So there's not much going on in Dayton, Ohio. So we had a friend who had a daughter at a modeling agency in Cincinnati. So we took him down there and they took him on board. And then they had classes for, you know, his age group, which was four. And yes. all the other kids were jumping on the couch and banging off the walls and screaming. And Hudson would just sit there and pay attention to the class. Oh, wow. So after a couple of classes, the, uh, the owner of the place asked us if um, we'd like to take him to Expo. And we didn't even know what that was. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. But it was in Dallas and we have family in Dallas. So we said, okay. So we went and he had to get up on stage and do commercials and monologues and two person scenes and model runway clothing and for like five days. Yes. And in the audience were agents and managers from LA. Sure. And they kind of just scooped him up. And we used to come out for pilot season and then go back home and then right. come back out. But then he got general hospital and they used him an awful lot in the beginning. So we just got an apartment and, and what are. year was this and at what age? Well, I was, um, I started those classes in Cincinnati at about four years old and it wasn't until I was about six that I actually came out here to California to act. Yes. Now I, uh, I, I used to follow and dancing with stars naturally. And all of a sudden they came up with the child, uh, dancing with the charge, you know, with the younger dancers, so you got me, got me hooked and right away. I started following you with, with mom there uh, looking uh, uh, over things. So that's when I, uh, I can, you know, notice that uh, not only personality, but uh, a great face for the camera, great personality. Um, you know, there's a big difference uh, in someone that really enjoys it and they have the feeling for it. Uh, becomes kind of a, uh, a passion, what have you, as he grows into it more and more, starting at four and six years old. So um, this is going to be interesting. Do you have anything else to add? Uh, what has it been like for a parent? It's a vigorous, hardworking, staying on top of things as an individual, even, yeah. you know, in my career, it's just, uh, it's been tough for one person. I, uh, I guess as a parent, can you give us an insight a little bit about that? Well, back when, you know, 
back before COVID started, you know, there was a lot of auditions driving all over the place. Yes. And, you know, you get them last minute. We had to get clothes. We had to go over the scripts. You know, we had to oh my. get to the auditions, driving around. Now it's different with COVID. Everything's done uh, self-tape. And then yes. if you get past the self-tape stage, then you Zoom for callbacks and stuff like that. Right. So, you know, you just have to make sure he's got the proper clothes that fit. Um, the work permit, everything has to be updated. Headshots need to be relatively current. You know, there's just sure. A lot of, and now with everything being on Zoom or self tape, we have to get it organized with a coach and yes, so just a oh, lot of uh -huh. organizing, pretty much. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, I just believe it or not. Um, I'll be honest with you. I'm 77, Hudson, and I'm yeah. still going through it. I yeah. still have those those uh commercials that they're wanting me to do those those takes on uh, the hands the uh front view the side view yeah. <laughs> and yeah. all of that so i'm still going after it. so if that's any incentive don't ever give up it's in your blood and i like it now when you sit back and they call you and say we'd like to you're the one, so it makes it a lot yeah. easier at 77 right. years old. Well, thank you, Donna. I appreciate that insight. I'm just going to turn now and uh, talk to um, uh, Hudson, if I may, and, and yeah. with some questions. Um, well, welcome to Spotlight on the Arts again there, Hudson. Thank uh, you very my, much. My honor to chat with you and learn more about actor Hudson West. Thanks for being my guest today. Um, you all may remember Hudson, who is known for playing at parts on uh, a, a general hospital, I believe, uh, uh, Tiny Tim, Jake Weber, and in the beginning, Jake Spencer, a uh, general hospital, those that follow. Our four is excellent dance moves on Dancing with the Stars, the Juniors, back in 2018 when I first got hooked on his ability and skills. Or the movie City of Angels. And there's mm -hmm. more, 43 we'll talk about. Not all of them, but there's 43. If you just check into your IMDB. Yeah. So <laughs> all in all, I've admired Hudson's true acting skills and have cherished a long time friendship uh, on Instagram, a social um, monitoring uh, my mother has mentioned before. So here we go, Hudson. Please share with us how you became inspired to be an actor, in your opinion. Well, the truth is, like, it wasn't something that I, you know, I was so young. I never even actually, like, had the dream to do it. I mean, it's, of course, I was passionate about it, but I never, like, I never, it just kind of, I fell into it. You know, it wasn't, um, I, I just went along with the process. I was very young. I didn't really know much what was going on. You know, I'm, I'm going from Ohio to, to Texas and then to California. And um, now I love it. I'm passionate about it. It's, it's, it's my favorite thing. And, but, um, and back then, back then I just kind of, uh, I went along with whatever my parents told me. I just, I couldn't read the script. So they just had to read it to me. I and see. Yeah. Like this, I was very young and, um, Yes, I stuck with it, and you know, here I am doing it now at at 14 years old, and it's really great. And um, I, I feel very blessed to have the opportunities that I do have. Well, I think you've got a long, uh, a long career ahead of you. So I'm just uh, again pleased to be able to be part of that, pro not process, but following you and uh, telling you from your heart what it's like, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. to be an actor. Well, what? So there wasn't really a initial person that inspired you at four to six years old watching TV. Surely Barney uh, had to have something to do with it. No. I mean, all I really watched was SpongeBob, and that that was about SpongeBob. it. SpongeBob. Oh, no. oh. so, I sorry. mean, it was um, it definitely a little bit a different way of getting into it. You know, a lot of kids that I know they always wanted to do it, and it was just like you know they knew immediately when they watched TV, and. Yes. Never, never really occurred to me what, you know, watching SpongeBob that I could, I could do something like that. And actually during my career, I've actually got to meet and work with Tom Kenny, who plays SpongeBob. Oh, on, oh yes. Now you've it. done, we're going to talk about some of that, but you have done voiceover. I have. That's, that's where I met Tom Kenny. And it was when, um, can you remember back when and 
what when when was your you received your first call back and and uh, accepted a production did you have a part a say in that um you mean I, I well i just my mom would get all excited if i book something and it's like you know it's just i guess i'm i guess i'm doing this and i go on set and <laughs> first time being on set is obviously really crazy you know there's yeah. there's a lot going on there and I mean, over the years, I actually, I learned a lot of stuff about how the movie works and it's yes. very interesting. It's a very complicated process. And I like to talk to people on set about their jobs. Like I talked to the producers ah. and, and even like the grip sometimes a lot last shoot I did, I got to, um, to get on their walkie talkies and like kind of like help assistant direct and stuff. I helped the grip. Uh -huh. oh. Yeah. Oh, super. And yeah. Excellent. Okay. Um, well, I was first inspired, believe it or not, personally, face to face by Walt Disney. He invited me to do screen tests. Later to find out it was for a series, I basically had a role after meeting his daughter, Bambi, at my job at 18 years old. And uh, I basically had the role. But back then, my parents didn't go for me going to California. I'd only mm -hmm. lived in two states. I mean, visited two states. Yeah, I know. Uh, right. Missouri and Kansas. So my mom and dad, it was a tub. But I, and my boss was not a, for it. And uh, then uh, but there was one our liquor buyer for this company that I was a stock boy. And uh, he was with United Artists. So he encouraged it. But I didn't, I didn't uh, really move on it until later in life. That's kind of my story. So <laughs> uh, very also, also I was inspired by uh, Burt Reynolds. My first oh. uh, background for former job was with uh, Smoking the Bandit. Mm. Uh, so I got to talk to Burt then and uh, different ones. And uh, so uh, that became a friendship. And once in a while we'd, we'd visit, you know, kind of give me inspiration. Uh, and of course, I've always admired the skills of Morgan Freeman. <laughs> yeah. And, well, on a national, worldwide level, do you have a an idol that you follow? Favorite actors? I've got yes. I've got a lot. I'm a huge fan of Robert De Niro. I've, oh I've, my yes! I love him. I love the, him in the '70s specifically, yes. and he's one of my favorite actors. More like modern day. I love Christian Bale and. Yeah. Um, Christian Bale, Jake Gyllenhaal, Samuel Jackson. Oh, um, I, I usually like I rank my my top ten artists, uh, my actors, and I, I rank everything. I've got my top ten people, and um, I I keep good track of that. When I watch new movies, if I think you know this guy should be up there, then I put him in my top ten actors. I love yeah. Tom Hardy too. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of great people, but I would say my favorite actor is Robert De Niro. Yes, I there's so many of that. You know, you kind of rank them as, especially if you get to meet them and spend time with them. Like, yeah. yeah. To the top, like a floating bobble, you know. Yeah, that's a good But one. I have so many over my, in my period. So, but you're, you're on the right track. I hope you have the opportunity to meet uh, Robert De Niro at some point. Who knows? Um, now, well, let's see. Have you, I guess, you, have you taken acting lessons? Uh, uh, and besides your coach for each production, uh, have you had the opportunity to uh, basically receive guidance and trainings? Uh, and do you want to mention someone that uh, has been a, a big uh, part of that? Yeah, um, I've I've taken like classes for forever. As soon as as soon as I came out here from six to just uh, just a few years or just up until COVID shut all the classes down all the way from, from those years, I was taking ah. classes. So from six to about 12, I, I was taking classes everywhere. I, my mom could sign me up for, Excellent. I've been to many different great direct, um, you know, uh, coach, uh, the actors themselves that also, you know, have classes, maybe like classes that go on once a week for a couple months. A lot of, I could go on and on. There's a lot of, a lot of great people that have, oh, uh -huh. have coached me and, and guided me and, what usually happens is I take their classes and if I really like them, they end up like, they'll be like my coach for auditions and stuff. I'll, you know, if I have a big yes. one, I'll go to their, their, wherever, if they have, if, I do, if they do it at their house on zoom or in the studio, I'll go and coach with them prior to auditions. And nowadays it's coaching on zoom. 
Excellent. Well, you know, I, I always tell uh, younger actors, in fact, all actors that I work with or find and, and try to coach, what have you, uh, we all, even myself, I go for, go for a, um, a shoot. I uh, don't mind a little coaching. I want to hear exactly what they want. You know, they look at me and think, I know it all. I don't. So at my age, I'm still looking for that guidance and uh, a little brush up on coaching, as we call it, uh, uh, to get me into the best uh, performance, whatever I can can deliver. Um, well, let me ask you, how do you respond to auditions? How do you deal with not getting a call back? Um. I mean, like nowadays, I find the the callback on Zooms like really scary and stressful. Like it's it's really it's really weird, you know, doing it all, uh, digitally. Yeah, back then, callbacks weren't weren't such a big deal. You know, I I enjoyed them. I usually, you know, I would I would have fun with them, and it would it was you know it's a great feeling when you get a callback and then you start, you start doing the network tests and chemistry reads and mix and matches with other actors. And you're at the point where you, you know, you think you you really have this in the bag. You know, they're they're pairing you up with all these different actors to see who you, who you work best with, and those are those are those are great. And Zoom, it gets a little bit draining and and a little bit tiring. And yes. so I don't I don't love doing it on Zoom, but it's it's still you know it's it's that's just how it is lately. I have to kind of adapt to that. Yeah, have to kind of adapt to that. Yeah. Well, Hudson, we've got to take a break. So hang with me and we'll be right back to learn more about All right. actor Good. Hudson West. When we come back, we'll talk more about some of the roles and uh, that uh, Hudson has played and uh, what inspired him from each maybe and what he got from it, etc. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Creative, connection, control. Support the arts and be the change. 24 hours a day, 200 countries. The show must go on. Introducing the world's first exclusive platform for artists and creators of all kinds. The biggest stage on earth. Stream Spotlight on the Arts on fan for me. Dot com. Stream Spotlight on the Arts on GIAJ Global Media OTT Network. Google us or find us on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, or Apple TV. Welcome back to Spotlight on the Arts. We continue our discussion, chat with Hudson West, an outstanding uh, younger actor that uh, you will become more familiar with as we get into the second part here on Spotlight on the Arts. Hudson, you played many interesting, challenging roles. And uh, for example, um, we talked about General Hospital, Young Cole and Jake uh, Spencer, uh, uh, like it was yesterday, I guess it was a recent one, uh, Young Cole, and uh, like it was yesterday. Um, you played many interesting, challenging roles, like I said. So can you say, share with us about your favorite role at this point has been? All right. Well, um, of course, General Hospital has been been my favorite forever. I mean, I've, I've been doing that for coming up on six years. I got the role when I was about eight and I'm 14 now. So that that's been a great journey. It's led me with a lot of more opportunities. It got me the, the Emmy nomination, which was, which is great. It was just amazing that, that uh, to get that opportunity right. when I was only 10. Um, so general hospital, of course, I love it. It's, it's great to, you know, I can go on set even like nowadays. I just, I just filmed a just couple of drop days. in. <laughs> I just, yeah, I just, I've, you know, I know everybody, I know the crew, the other cast members. So that's, that's, that's great. I had it becomes family. You know? Yes. It becomes like a second family. Exactly. And, um, now, 
You just turned 14 last week. Uh, yes, March 3rd was my birthday, yeah. Happy birthday and live. I sent that on Instagram. Trying yes, to that across to you. So thank you for that. So that uh, definitely, I guess, would be your your home base and your family. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've also, I really loved filming uh, Penny Dreadful City of Angels with yes. John Logan. That was, that was great. I love, um, I loved the, it was a period piece. So everything was, was set to be in the thirties. Production design was amazing. The costume yes. that's, yes. and um, that, that was, that was great. And, and I got to, I got to do it with John Logan, which was, which was amazing to do that with him. And what an experience. Great, great. And you cast. did good. You did great. Thank you. It's kind of a natural at it, I believe. <laughs> and that filmed for, for a couple months. So I was able to get pretty comfortable on that set. And um, mm -hmm. that show was, was really, really good. I, I loved watching it just for entertainment. Now, I don't want to get into a DNR, but um, I guess one uh, in post production now from my, my uh, looking around, uh, the wound at Wood playing yes. Wyatt. Can you talk about that at all? This in post production. Yes. So it was. Um, we finished uh, wrapping up a couple months ago. We filmed back in the fall in in Massachusetts, and I got I went to Massachusetts for about two months, and it was it was excellent shoot. I don't know. I don't know how much I'm, I'm able to reveal, but it was. It's like a like a psychological horror sort of drama mo yes. movie, and it was. It was a great, great film. Um, I love doing it. It was that was another shoot I could get really comfortable on. That's when I was. It, it was so that was yeah. That, that's in post production right now, and I'm very excited to see when it comes out. I don't know when it'll come out. I don't know where it'll be streaming. Sure, but I know what you mean. You make a commercial, and you think it might someone might see it locally, you know, and then just yeah. showing to some other state. So yeah. that's. But I'm, I'm hoping that uh, they do um, schedule that where we get to take, you know, take a look on. Yeah, I don't, I don't know much. Extra, about, what have you, so. Yeah, I don't know the details about that, but that's. I don't know. Well, tell us what the future. What do you see for the future? I know you're in high school now, um, and uh, that's got to be something you have to finish. And then I'm, I guess there's college. And you just kind of balance things as you've done since age six or what have you, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I just, I just got in, I'm, I'm still in eighth grade, but I had to, uh, there's a whole application process to get into the high schools because I'm trying to get into a, a private high school and uh -huh. I had to take a placement test into it. I had to do interview interviews with the admissions team. Um, yes. My teacher had to write like recommendation letters um, it was it was a it was a pretty big process, and I got into both of the schools that I applied to, which is great. Um, I'm I'm gonna attend a school that that has a med program in it, and oh, that'll be interesting. I'm I'm planning on taking that, uh -huh. see how that will will take me, and so it'll it's getting since school is getting um, you know a little bit more serious lately. I'm gonna have to try to balance that, and thinking maybe I will focus a little bit more on school for at least for the start of my high school. Well, how about the dancing? Do you have any new uh, opportunities coming for another dancing, this time dancing maybe with uh, Hudson West? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that Dancing with the Stars was a, was a great, great um, place like to meet a lot of great people, a lot of talented people on that show. I had never danced before. I had no prior prior dance knowledge, so that was very tough for me. And you know, obviously, I I only made it like one episode into it, but it was. Yeah. But it was you did fun. great. I just was kind of hooked on Hudson West, the dancer. You know, how about voiceovers? How do you do these like these voiceovers? I was trying to look at some notes. Um, oh, Klaus, Klaus. Yes, yeah, that. Um, Klaus, it got it actually got nominated for an Oscar yes. for best animated feature of the year, and that one I did um, pretty much just some background work on that. But I can I was re I was watching it, and I could I could definitely hear my my voice, which was which is great. Um, Klaus was 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 great. I I just did 
maybe like one or two days of just walla and and maybe wild lines and and just call out just a little bit to get some you know background voices for the children in that movie how about mail cop you know that was a fun movie Yes, yeah, so I, I got to um, I got to work with Kevin James on Mall Cop, and that was that was Kevin amazing. James, yes, yeah, amazing to get to meet him, Andy Fickman as well, um, and that was one of the very first things I'd ever done in my in my life, and it was a, it was a pretty I mean my my role wasn't big in the movie, but it was it was a great great thing to. Well, what roles now are you wanting to play? What what are you wanting to pursue now? Um. I, you know, I'll take anything that comes my way, whether that be television or movies. Um, for as far as television, though, I, I had done previously American Crime Story with Ryan Murphy and Sarah Paulson. And I also recently did 911, yes. which was also a Ryan Murphy project. And so I've done, you know, things with Ryan Murphy. I got to meet him and he was great. And so it's it's my dream to get on American Horror Story because I know. Oh, that, yes, that would be yeah. great. Well, you know, you've got, uh, like I say, a long life ahead of you. And mm-hmm. maybe when you reach those early 30s, 35, you may be more not choosy or picky. You still like to work, but you'll probably be looking for that one role you love to play. Where right now, it's, I guess it's sort of this, uh, sort of tough to try to, to have any insight on that. Uh, yeah, at age 14. So. Yeah, but you're doing great. And I want to encourage you with, uh, if I may, uh, for your future. And I'll be keeping uh, in touch and watching from a distance and see how it comes out. Thank you. So well, we're about just about out of time. So I want to thank you so much for contributing to Spotlight, uh, Spotlight on the Arts and making it a learning informational experience to all. So do you have any final words for us? Uh, well, just thank you again for having me on here. This was, this was great, um, and I, I appreciate it. It was, it was great to talk with you. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, the viewers, for watching Spotlight on the Arts, for taking the time out uh, to watch the show. Look for more Spotlight on the Arts. I'm a fan for me, GIJ Media OT Network. Streaming now. Rick J. Say, be safe and stay healthy. See you next time.